Wake up! Got stuff to do. Previously on the Silverado, we got it running, we got it moving. Now the interior is back together again. A few odds and ends left to put back together, and we got a whole new truck. Here we go. So this is actually the end of the crankshaft out of my scrap Vortec. We need the end to line up the flywheel so we can weld the little weights for the uh, tack on there proper. And I need this little guy for my tack or my tack signal for my Silverado, so it works out pretty good. Just gotta figure out how to get this out. <laughs> so I need that, I'll just machine a pulley for the front of the Cummins and then stick the crank sensor on there. I've got a tack for my truck. And then we'll pop this in the lathe and mount their flywheel and then we can make sure it's perfectly centered and then space those three little tabs for the tack on the Mercedes. Two for one special today. Here we go. Good afternoon, YouTubers. Here we are looking at the Cummins Silver Auto Swap. And uh, Rich was talking about a Speedo. It's a little weird. I don't want to see the guy in a Speedo while I'm uh, working in the garage here. But I mean, whatever floats his boat, takes him for a swim. Uh, I think he was talking about the speedometer. And so, coming out of the transfer case here, there's a little casing can see the transmission fluids leaking through the bolt hole there just gonna pop that off and we're gonna grind into her and see if we can't fix up the tachometer throw one of the gears in there and so we have a working speedometer and we can see how fast we're not going with no drive shaft maybe we'll get there soon all right figure out how to get my speedo working well, I'm not touching you after you get out of the pool, so I don't know about that. But I mean the speedometer, sure. Okay. Uh, so this is a little gear here that reads a magnet on the sensor. Yep. It tells you. Just a hall effect. Yep. And then, so we were originally going to put this on the original transmission tack sensor. Yep. But and that was in this housing right here, right? Inside, yeah. A yeah. separate housing as well. And uh, that plastic gear itself is actually too big, so it's not going to work. Okay. This will not fit on there. So we're actually going to put it in here instead. We're going to machine the inner diameter of this to press fit onto the uh, output shaft, shaft, the output yeah. shaft. Yeah. And then uh, we're going to have it sit in here. This is actually, uh, this actually protrudes a little bit. It actually yeah. sticks out. So we need it to kind of sit flush like this. So we're actually going to take this mount here yeah. and we're going to sit it right in it and we're gonna weld that mount right to this. Okay, so you just cut this one right out. That's right. Easy peasy, weld it right to there. So we can, we gotta find center, we gotta find the center of this gear in the housing and then and then cut a slot in here. Actually, we could we could do like a nice, um, nice tight fit for the magnet to go in, right? And then we can weld this kind of up and down a little bit of play for the welder to, to leave just a 10 thou gap maybe there. That should be fine to pick it up, right? Yep. Beauty. Sounds good. Yeah, shouldn't take too long. Nice. Here we go. Yeah. You, hey, you got a job tomorrow, except if you keep saying that. <laughs> Find your own saying. Is that what, how that goes? Is that your saying? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. well, I just want Here to we go. be rich. <laughs> hey, so uh, drive shaft for the Silverado is done, which is good because then I can drop off my drive shaft for the Mercedes. So piece some pieces together. Give them a length, and uh, I'll be able to roll Silverado out again tonight anyway. So I'm um, looking forward to that. Here we go. So we got a nice drive shaft here from uh, Niagara Drive Line. Uh, and it wasn't too bad at all because the U joints for the Dodge and the GM were exactly the same. So it was my yoke off of the Dodge transmission and slap some paint on that and stick it underneath. So yeah, you can paint well with a. fix the seat in the silver auto so yeah so the 01 that parts truck it had nice power seats and lumbar support and I like the lumbar so we're gonna take the cloth and the cushion and the airbag stuff and put it on the frame of the 01 so start by pulling these covers off <laughs> so these are just clips uh, Phillips screwdriver on the top here grab a Phillips right here Take that handle off. Um, while he's doing that, there's two little pins in the armrest. Uh, you see a hole, you put the hole in there, you can pull the armrest right out. Okay, 
That's off. Uh, no, it's stuck on the headrest though. Right? You can tell who the gentle one is. <laughs> this is the gentle person. 18 millimeter bolt that will take take the seat belt off of there. Now this clip right here is pretty kind of a pain in the ass because it loops around and then it loops around again. Kind of is a pain. But like you said, it's pretty. It makes for a pretty seat. There we go. Once you kind of get it, you can just peel it off there. Carefully. This is the one we want to save, so. And then these little tree house um, spruce tree clips into the cardboard. That's why I can't leave these seats up in the rain. All right, seatbelt clip there. Um, same thing, little screwdriver, and it just pops into, uh, it's just little clips there. So you can take that off. And then these ones sometimes pop off and sometimes don't. So this is what they look like. Now I'm at the bottom. They hook into, they just spread out. So if you pull hard enough, you can kind of pull it out. We can't, I have four of them and I have to keep two good ones. So, I'm gonna try needle nose underneath, clean ones, and then just kind of wiggle and pull. Now these are tough, but you can't get them out like that. So, those aside, this back is ready to come off. If you have an airbag on the side, there's a plastic clip that goes around the airbag. If you're saving the cloth, um, then uh, you have to be careful of that. If, it's, uh, if you're getting new material, then uh, you can just cut around it. So, in this seam here is Velcro. So once you peel it up just a little bit, you can reach your hand in and just kind of break that Velcro seal. And you don't want to pull that Velcro off the foam. And there you go. Now, we also need the foam from this because the old one has skinnier sides than the 06 does. And this foam is in good shape, so but we'll take the bottom off first. The seat belt has a sensor, so we have to move the seat belt over. So I, we can probably leave the seat belt, we'll just feed that through. All right, perfect. You gotta be careful because everything underneath here is sharp. So um, wear gloves or um, get somebody else with tougher hands than you to do it. <laughs> you can use a little screwdriver or a pick. I love this tool, this is my Probably my favorite tool. It's my go-to tool. Just kind of start at the back and just curl it over. Ah, just a little plastic retainer clip that folds over. Fold that over. If you have heated seats, you'll have uh, a plug that goes in between the foam and the seat here. And then there's a cushion or a little pad that lays on there that warms your bum real nice. Um, this one doesn't have that. So that's one of the only options that Silverado's not gonna have now is heated seats. So for the back, you can just peel the cardboard off very gently. Uh, it's just a little bit of glue on it, not a big deal. And then just very carefully uh, there's real, no real nice way to do it, just kind of peel that foam off. And we're being gentle because we want to reuse this foam. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a city worker's truck, so um, basically they didn't really use the truck at all. They just sat there at the job site. So once that's off, we can go grab the other seat. That little handle has a little clip. I think you just push it for your... Oh, dang it. Okay. Well, that one broke, but that's okay. That's how not to do it. <laughs> just. I broke just the little tab there. We'll have to fix that. Be more gentle than me. Anyway, push that little clip in. And then take the four screws out. I'll take the cover off the side. One, two, three, four. So this one's got a little tab at the back. Just poke it, it's on the wrong side. If they put it right there, it'd be no problem, but stick your little pick and just push on the tab and then pull it out. So if you look at it, that's what it looks like. So put that in a safe spot. We'll, we'll peel the bottom off of this, cut the back off of that, and then move all the sensors over for airbag stuff, and then uh, cut a hole in it, and put the seat in the Silverado. So here we go. 
Right, just what got her? Yeah, the, the, well, the whole reason we took this apart, right, was so we could get this coffee money out of it, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, coffee full, money. Full loony. Sweet. A full loony. <laughs> That's like 52 cents American. But you need to get paid this week, too, so treat your wife to something nice. Um, so the bottom cushion really start at the back, and then because the Velcro is, is kind of on the, on the back here, we just kind of start putting the lip on, and you can pull up on the Velcro if it's because when it's still loose, you can still grab it with your fingers, kind of pull it off the back here, uh, the, the Velcro, and then get one guy to pull it at the back, and then just kind of massage it into the uh, Velcro strips, and you have a nice tight fit. Quick tip if you want a real comfy seat. You uh, roll into the wife's bedroom, flip over the mattress, that memory foam, cut a little square out, you know, about the size of your butt pad here, and while you're putting this cover back on, just slip it in there. <laughs> so yeah, the seat. I'm gonna put the cat back on, and then we'll uh, basically turn the cushion inside out, start in the corner, and then just fold it down on the Velcro and tuck it underneath. We got a nice new seat. So I'm gonna bend this handle over just slightly. Fire extinguisher. So Heron's already caught me twice sneaking into the truck, trucks in the yard or working on other stuff in the shop and just kind of now the truck's back together again for the most part on the inside pretty well buttoned up under the hood <laughs> it's pretty exciting to uh, basically it's a brand new truck to me I've never owned a new vehicle I bought this with a hundred thousand K on it but it's better than it was when I bought it with a hundred K on it uh, the interior is pretty well immaculate needs a little bit of cleaning and the cup holders and that yet but uh, Aaron did a really nice job putting everything back together again the dash the uh, the boots um, there was a noise in the fan and that all that was was the fan clicked in and there's a tab that goes it rides on a ramp and clicks over and that tab didn't seat in so as soon as I turned the fan on it spun out and that's what the noise was not a big deal I still got to do the alternator mount the alternator clean up some wiring do the uh, uh, grid heater yet I got to machine that uh, gear for the speedo yet I make an adapter for the tack but uh, pretty well it's it's coming along really nice and I'm excited about uh, the truck as excited as I am though there is paying jobs in the tr in the shop that I have to get to first um, the LS swap we're still in the middle of it um, we had to rebuild a 4610 Massey the engine blew up and that's a daily machine that uh, the customers really needed there was also Ventrac uh, for cleaning turkey barns we, we have to get going on that so we're, we're picking out as much as we can um, got some a few ideas going around for the truck. Maybe put it on the road as a service truck and and let Aaron do some service calls as he's uh, got a good head on his shoulders. So, but uh, we'll see. Um, nothing's for sure. Yeah, I gotta look at insurance and all that stuff too yet. But um, we moved the seat back, this armrest, so it's it's pretty well about. Uh, I can just stick my fingers in behind there without it rubbing, and that leaves lots of room for the shifter. Yet I'm really happy how everything's coming together. Um, the power seats are awesome with the lumbar. Now that I have it in the Tahoe, it's kind of hard not to uh, miss it when you're in, in another vehicle. So, um, yeah, we'll see where we are in another week or two, but uh, should be going down the road soon. I, I need to go over the whole truck again as a whole, um, check all my levels, and, and I machined the front rotors. Still need to machine the back rotors, but um, very excited how this one's going. So, um, shouldn't be too long anymore now. So, here we go. Hey, hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon. There's a lot of stuff happening there to help support the channel. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich.